Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I would just like to make a brief intervention um, on this motion before we get into the cauldron of, of this debate. I must say, Mr. Speaker, that it is a great day for the government of the day to present motions that are impacting positively on the lives of the people of this country and, of course, injecting new meaning in the economic life of St. Lucia. Mr. Speaker, I fully support the resolution put forward by the Prime Minister and Minister for Finance to borrow an amount of U.S. $2,343,908 from the CARICOM Development Fund to finance the implementation of the Community Tourism Program. The loan, Mr. Speaker, as indicated by the Prime Minister, is to be repaid over 12 years commencing from the date of disbursement of the loan, inclusive of a two-year grace period. The interest rate on the loan, Mr. Speaker, is 3% per annum. Very good, given the type of interest rates we have globally. The loan is repayable in 40 equal or approximately equal quarterly installments on the 30th of March, 30th of June, 30th of September, and 30th of December in each year. This new borrowing, Mr. Speaker, represents an expansion in borrowing for community tourism from the CARICOM Development Fund. Our government has also significantly reshaped the model of community tourism that was being promoted by the former administration. Mr. Speaker, there is no doubt that many tourists prefer the authentic experience of community tourism and we therefore need to cater for this class of tourists. We have witnessed a significant expansion in Airbnbs, Mr. Speaker, in St. Lucia, with many now being located in some of our villages or communities. These smaller developments in our villages and communities, Mr. Speaker, bring significant benefit to these communities in the form of rental, income, taxis, restaurants, employment and other amenities and services. This also provides an opportunity for diversifying the tourist product and ensuring that the benefits of tourism are shared geographically in St. Lucia. Mr. Speaker, earlier I mentioned tourism's contribution to the economy of St. Lucia, to GDP in particular, and obviously this particular resolution and borrowing must be viewed in consonance with the overall strategy of the government to ensure we have sustained economic growth in this country. And Mr. Speaker, the Labour Party government, ably led by the Honourable Member for Cassius East, has transformed the economy of St. Lucia resulting in growth rates of 12.2% and 18.1% in 2021 and 2022, following a massive contraction of 25.4% in 2020. That's when members opposite tampered with the levers of power. There has also been a significant fiscal turnaround as reflected in the overall balance as a percentage of GDP moving from a deficit of 12.2% in fiscal year 2020-2021 to narrowing to 5.5% in fiscal year 2021-2022 and to 1.5% in fiscal year 2022-2023. Similarly, the primary deficit narrowed from 8.2% in fiscal year 2020-2021 to 2.2% in the fiscal year 2021-2022 and moving to a surplus of 1.3% in the fiscal year 2022-2023. In line with this turnaround in fiscal performance, our debt to GDP ratios has come down from a peak of 98.1% in 2020 to 85.9% in 2021 and to 69.8% in 2022. The unemployment rate, again, Mr. Speaker, we're looking at it in a holistic fashion. 
The unemployment rate, which increased slightly from 21.7% in 2020 to 21.9% in 2021, fell in 2022. We expect, Mr. Speaker, that the favorable economic performances will continue in 2023. These numbers will be released very shortly when the budget policy statement is read by the Honorable Minister for Finance. Mr. Speaker, these numbers show the remarkable turnaround in economic, fiscal, and labor market performance in St. Lucia since our government has taken over the reins of power in St. Lucia. Mr. Speaker, we now wish to move into a phase of consolidated expansion to further increase growth, productivity, and employment. Mr. Speaker, the goal of this government is to increase the standard of living of the population and to reduce the unemployment rate into single digits. And this is why community tourism is so important, so that the indigenous population can extract economic benefits from that particular sector, thereby making their own demand for goods and services in the economy and stimulating growth as part of a diversification strategy. In this regard, Mr. Speaker, we have seen an increase in business confidence in the economy of St. Lucia by the latest survey carried out by the St. Lucia Chamber of Commerce, an independent entity. Moreover, Mr. Speaker, we have also witnessed a surge in foreign investment in St. Lucia. It is clear that the private sector will realize a significant expansion in the future. We therefore need to ensure that the government can support these investments through its public sector investment program. We are by now all aware, Mr. Speaker, that the Honorable Prime Minister and Minister for Finance has announced that fiscal year 2024-2025 as the year of infrastructure. We therefore expect, Mr. Speaker, that there will be an expansion in infrastructural spending to close the infrastructure deficit. Again, providing the conducive environment for investment in tourism, and of course, making the various communities more attractive for our visitors who want that community experience. This will require, Mr. Speaker, inflows of concessionary capital to finance St. Lucia's development. We will not do like the previous government, Mr. Speaker, in borrowing huge sums of money with very little to show for all of this borrowing. They borrowed in the vicinity of $1 billion with nothing to show. And any one of them that want to debate that come with the social and economic review and we shall add the figures together and you will see that no doubt one billion dollars and I want them to take me around St. Lucia to show what they accomplish with such levels of borrowing. However, with the borrowings that we are engaged in is to really deal with the productive sectors of the economy. Borrowing by our government, Mr. Speaker, will be in highly productive activities supporting and sustaining economic growth and development. You can see it's very different to the former administration. If you borrow about a billion dollars and you inject that in the economy, there is no way our country could have been in a recession in 2019. Impossible. But you see, it was a Sime Gwen Puin operation. The virtue and value of a policy-based loan, Mr. Speaker, like we saw just in the, in the previous motion, just in the previous motion, Mr. Speaker, is to give the government the flexibility to deal with the economy. And then we come in with the CDF now as an integral part of that infrastructure to return our country to a solid path of economic growth. And we cannot be surprised that in such an environment, they resort to propaganda as a weapon to try to destroy this government, to try to mislead the people of this country into believing that the government is not delivering. But we are not going to be distracted, Mr. Speaker. We are going to remain solidly on course and deliver to the people of this country. And at the end of the term, 
they will see the battle relay of success right around this country, Mr. Speaker. And so, Mr. Speaker, in closing, I want to again accentuate my support for the borrowing in that regard, Mr. Speaker. Long live the St. Lucia Labour Party government. Long live the Honorable Philip J. Pierre. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.